The NBA is much more athletically focused now with traditional back to the basket centers that pounded out a thing of the past. With the center position slowly dying out, I decided to honor the great ones of the past by creating this top 10 centers of all time list. Hello there and welcome back to another video. If you enjoy watching NBA content, you came to the correct place. Be sure to subscribe with those bell notifications on if you're new here. You don't want to miss a single upload, I promise you. Without further ado, let's get into this. Starting things off is Willis Reed. Willis Reed is most known for his heroic performance in Game 7 of the 1970 NBA Finals, but he actually had a more distinguished career than most realize. Reed only played 10 seasons, but he was an all-star for the first seven and won the Rookie of the Year award in 1965. In his sixth year, he took home the league's MVP award. Reed was also the Finals MVP in 70 and 73, the only two years the New York Knicks took home the title. Up next is Patrick Ewing. Although he doesn't have the championships or MVPs that Willis Reed does, Patrick Ewing didn't benefit from playing with the greats like Reed. The best teammate he ever had was Martin Jackson for five seasons, 88 to 92, whose all-time stats make him look better than he actually was. Still, Ewing managed to take the Knicks to the finals the first year Jordan retired and took the Rockets to seven games, losing by only six in the deciding contest. Ewing won the Rookie of the Year award in 1985 draft class that included Chris Bullock, Carl Malone, and Joe DeMars. Next up is David Robinson. Joining Ewing as the other center of the 1992 Dream Team, David Robinson is yet another Rookie of the Year winner on this list. He joined the league late because of his service in the Navy, but he didn't waste any time making his mark. Appearing in the All-Star Game for 10 of his first 12 seasons, including his first 7 years. Robinson won the League MVP award in 1995, but his 1994 campaign marked two of his all-time greatest achievements. On February 17th, Robinson recorded a quadruple double against the Pistons with 34 points, 10 rebounds, 10 assists, 10 blocks, and 2 steals. Then in the final game of the regular season, he scored 71 points to clinch the scoring title. At number 7 is George Mikan. George Mikan was the first NBA superstar. From 1949 through 1954, Mikan had one of the most dominant six-year stretches of any player. He was on the All-NBA first team all six years, powered the Lakers to five championships, and would have won multiple MVPs and final MVPs had those awards been given out in those years. Mikan is most known for the rule changes he caused. He was so dominant on both ends, the NBA widened its lanes from 6 feet to 12 and introduced the shock clock, and the NCAA outlawed defensive goaltending. Next up at number 6 is Moses Malone. It seems unjust to put Moses Malone as the 6th best anything, but the NBA has seen so many legendary centers, someone has to be 6th. Malone was one of the original pioneers of going straight from high school to the pros and it paid off. He made 13 All-Star games, won 3 league MVPs, led the league in rebounds per game 6 times, and is 5th all-time in career rebounds. He did most of his work in the 1980s, the NBA's strongest decade. On top of his relentless rebounding, Malone averaged over 22 points in a season 9 times and peaked at 31.1 during his 1982 MVP season. Dropping in at number 5 is Shaquille O'Neal. In his heyday, the Diesel was the most physically dominant center since Wood Chamberlain. He had almost no actual skill, but it didn't matter. He was so much bigger and stronger than everyone else, all he had to be good at was layups. Of course, this backfired on him in his free throw shooting. The hack a Shaq routine was almost enough to single-handedly derail any chance of success. He also benefited from playing in an era that didn't feature many great centers. Nevertheless, he was the best player on three straight championship teams and the second best on another. At number 4 is Hakeem Olajuwon. Hakeem the Dream might be the best all-around defensive player ever. He has by far the most blocks of all time. 3,832 to Kim Matumbo's 3,289 and is 8th on the all-time steals list. The next closest center on that list is Clifford Robinson at number 45. Olajuwon's post-game is one of the best the league has ever seen. 
His dream shake was almost impossible to stop. He has worked for several current NBA superstars to teach them his skills in the post, such as Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, and Dwight Howard. Up next at number three is Wilt Chamberlain. Wilt Chamberlain was the Shaq of the 1960s, but better. He was so much bigger, stronger, and more powerful than everyone else, it didn't matter that he couldn't shoot. In his very first season in 1960, Chamberlain scored 37.6 points and grabbed 27 rebounds per game, en route to becoming the first rookie to be named league MVP. This feat was later matched by only Wes Unseld in 1969. Of course, Chamberlain also has the record for most points in a game with 100, and averaged an astonishing 50.4 points per game in that 1962 season, two records that seem impossible to break. Dropping in at number two is Bill Russell. Russell was the ultimate winner. He never scored above 90 points per game in any season, but he won 11 total championships as a player and NBA record. He was also the player coach for the Celtics the last three years of his career, and they won two championships during that time span. Russell benefited from playing with other all-time greats like Bob Cousy, Sam Jones, and Bill Sharman, among others, but he was still the best player and leader during that 11 championships in 13 years run. And for the number one spot, I have chosen Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was never as dominant in his peak years as the other great centers like Wilt or Shaq, but he wins at number one because of his incredible consistency. From his rookie year of 1970 all the way through 1987, Kareem scored somewhere between 20.1 to 28.4 points per game. Even in his last two seasons after hitting the age of 40, he still scored 18.2 and 15.9 points respectively. He is the all-time leader in points with 38,387, MVPs with 6, and All-Star selections with 19. The only time he wasn't an All-Star was in 1978 when he missed 20 games in the beginning of the season due to a broken hand. That wraps the video up guys, if you've made it this far, thank you so much, you are absolutely awesome, it is highly appreciated. If you're new here, subscribe with those bell notifications on, and smash that like button, it really helps out a lot. Until next time, have a great day.